For people with disabilities, technology can open many doors to independence, but it can be very difficult keeping up to date on the latest inventions and developments. A recent trend towards major exhibitions that display products designed for disabled people should make the task easier. Hello and welcome to another edition of DNet, the Disability Network. I'm Joe Coughlin. And I'm Susan Pettit. When it comes to technology, people with disabilities have very few chances to test, look at, or even find out what's available. But manufacturers and retailers are beginning to recognize a growing market, one that's rising in numbers as more disabled people move out into the community and as the population ages. And major exhibitions targeted at people with disabilities are a new way of reaching that market. The second annual People in Motion show was held this summer at the Exhibition Grounds in Toronto. On today's program, we'll find out about some of the products that were on display. Products useful at home, on the road, and in the workplace. First, we'll look at transportation. To be more specific, mass transit. One of the largest vehicles at the exhibition was this bus designed in Winnipeg. It's part of a demonstration project on accessible intercity transportation that is taking place in southern Ontario. The project, which was organized by Transport Canada, started in January 1990 and is scheduled to run until 1993. John Giordano is with Canada Coach Lines, the company that operates the buses. This is an MCI, Motor Coach Industries, uh, 102A3, uh, WA3. That, is, uh, that means it's 102 inches wide and it's wheelchair accessible and it has three axles and basically what it does is run down from Kitchener to Buffalo Airport corridors. And how many buses have you got en route? Uh, we have six all together and uh, through the program we, we had to have at least four on all the time. Depending on how many calls for the, uh, for the buses come in during the day. And how We're many calls are you getting? Averaging one, two a day. Now is that good or bad? We'd like to see it more. We'd like to average two, two per trip, but, you know, two passengers per trip. Well, why don't we take a look inside and, and see some of the features it's okay. offering. fine. Now, before we go inside the bus, are there any features that you could talk to that will help people with disabilities on the doors or the stairs? Yes, right off the bat, we have our color coding for the visually impaired, and we have our PA systems that are enhanced for the hearing impaired. There's lots and lots of features inside this bus. Yes, yeah, so a lot of engineering has gone into this development of this coach, and basically what you can see is that uh, the seats now slide back and allow for two chairs, one on each side, right and left-hand side. As the elevator rises, that becomes a flooring. And with the restraints on, uh, we can use the handheld uh, controls to lift the floor up and close all the doors. Basically, we have an LED board right here that makes the wheelchair lift uh, foolproof. Uh, we cannot uh, jump ahead of a step without having the system stop on us. We take it through step by step with all the procedures that are up on the wall here for each driver. And uh, we, we would carry on by lifting the lift up and going through our steps and the lights would light on each step of the way until we, we had the system closed off and the lift up in the air. If a person isn't in a wheelchair but they need some assistance, how do you accommodate them? Basically what we have are uh, little carts that run up the, the size of this aisle here and we can in turn uh, have them uh, taken into one of the seats that the handles lift up and we could slide them on, onto, the, onto our regular seats. So there's lots and lots of pluses and features to this coach. What are the disadvantages? Well, as you can see, the aisles and washrooms are very narrow. And uh, it, in the future, we hope to have engineering design a, a coach that would allow us to get to the uh, back of the coach and have the, the washrooms wheelchair accessible and the aisles as well. Besides buses that carry people from city to city, another type of mass transit moves people around town. This is the Lawrence Manor uh, bus. Actually, that's our community bus right behind there. The latest development in municipal transportation for people with disabilities is called Community Bus, and it has been running along one route in Toronto since October 1990. It was developed in Boris, Sweden in 1983. The service uses low-floor buses and operates on fixed but flexible routes, which link disabled and elderly people 
to places such as shopping malls and recreational facilities. The buses are equipped with ramps rather than lifts, and there are no steps to climb, a feature that is appreciated not only by people with disabilities, but by people who have baby carriages and shopping carts as well. Some routes don't have formal bus stops, but allow passengers to board anywhere along the route. Just signal the driver and the bus will stop. In thinly populated areas, such as the municipality of Mark in Sweden, passengers can call the driver directly. Ja, hey. Är det servicelinjen? Ja, det är jag. Ja, kan jag ta det vid lantarna då? Community bus offers more flexibility than conventional transportation services for people with disabilities. You don't have to make reservations days in advance. And for transit companies, it's also less expensive to run. Coming up next on our People in Motion special, personal transportation and personal lifts. back with more from the People in Motion exhibition on transportation and technology. Many people who use wheelchairs have learned to drive vans, and vehicle manufacturers were out in full force at the exhibition. Some vans were equipped with ramps, others with a variety of lifts. Many people who use scooters were at the show as well. They had a chance to see ways to load their scooters into vehicles. This lift will operate at the side of a curb and it rotates to clear a tailgate. So it can be used on vans, minivans, blazers, suburbans and some station wagons. And here's a way of storing your scooter in the trunk of your car. A similar kind of lift can be used for wheelchairs. For wheelchair users who don't want to use up trunk space, here's another option. A carrier that hooks up to a trailer hitch. Since it's a Canadian design, it has a cover for protection from our weather. The chair topper is also for wheelchair users who don't want to use up trunk space. Graham Laud of Bond Mobility shows us how it works. Okay, the bronze chair topper is designed to take a manual folding chair and store it overhead. The driver negotiates a transfer from a wheelchair to a seat and then with the a handheld pendant, the chair topper opens, will unfold, and then by directing a lift hook onto the seat and guiding the chair, you can then fold, the lift will fold, take the chair out of your way and store it safely overhead, out of your way. It's pretty slick, so you'd have to have some manual dexterity Yes, it requires that the driver be able to negotiate a transfer from the wheelchair to the seat, but if the driver is able to do that, then it offers an alternative to going to a more costly and cumbersome van modification. Now, uh, this is just for manual chairs, too? Yes. It'll, it'll so how much would it cost to have this thing installed? To install that on a car, it would be $34.90 installed. There's no taxes on that. Uh -huh. And then that's installed as you see it on this car. Yeah, do you see a decrease in gas mileage if you put one of these kinds of things on the top of the truck? Input from people that have been using it show a 15%, 15 to 20% decrease in, in mileage. But, but it's worth it because it gives you some freedom. People that like to stay in their cars, particularly in heavy traffic areas, a car is a preferable mode of transportation to a van. It is still able to go in parking spaces where vans may not be able to go, so it still offers an attractive alternative. Dale Perry of Harwell Mobility showed us another way to get in and out of vehicles. Okay, this is a portable ramp designed for wheelchairs, scooters, things of that nature. And basically, it, it works like a telescopic fishing pole. You slide these things out, the detent button locks on the side. Set that up on the side of your van or whatever vehicle you're loading the equipment up into. And this provides a, a safe 
inexpensive means of taking a wheelchair such as this or a scooter like this and being able to load it into your van. Uh, if you don't have a van, let's say you don't have a means of transportation, your friends come along, you're able to transport your equipment in their vehicle. So this opens up a lot of doors that may not normally be available. Or maybe getting into a uh, cottage or something like that, or a couple of stairs you could over. A cottage, that, yeah. traveling to hotels, a motel. Sure. Uh, if there's just a few steps, you can set this up and be able to transport the chair. Now these are nice and sturdy. They're made out of uh, aluminum. Yes, they're made out of extruded aluminum. They're very uh, tough. Non corrosive, incredibly durable. Um, you would probably buy one of these once. Now, how much would a pair of these cost? Uh, they range from from approximately $300, and they come in different weight capacities. Now, obviously, power chairs weigh more than standard wheelchairs, and you can get them to hold up to about 700 pounds. Lifts have not only been designed for vehicles, they are also useful around the house. Many people with more severe disabilities cannot transfer from a wheelchair to a bed or a bathtub without help, and lifts designed for just that purpose are getting more sophisticated. Alan Nissen showed us one designed in Scandinavia. It's uh, an open sling, which means that you don't have to lift the person to get it on. You drop it down behind, like that, you lean forward. We just drop it down behind, and you can, a lot of people can do it themselves. You, we didn't get it there, right that. And what do I do next? Well, we hook you up to this yoke here to okay. get you transferred to another position. And you just take the, that one there. Yeah. And there we have several possibilities. This time we have folded beneath both legs. We can go between the legs, depending on handicap and how large you are. Mm. You can operate that one yourself. Now this remote allows me to go up and down. Yeah. Uh, what if I want to go backward and forward across We have the room? to add an option to it, but it's possible. Okay. We can definitely do that. But you can do that manually now? Oh, yeah, I can push you around. Okay. And you can go whatever way you want. Alrighty. It's very easy. So, which rooms would this be used for? Well, the first one I would look at would be a bathroom, because there's so much lifting, bathtub, toilet, sink vanity that's that's the first one the second one we'll, i would look at would be a, would be a, a bedroom and if there's any way combining them like they do overseas you would have it your apartment totally apartment rectangular leave us uh, just a, a partition between the bedroom and bathroom and then let the lift cover both rooms I see. then you you can well, you can actually do that with the whole apartment and another lift, a, the personal transfer the personal lift, transfer is portable. And what we'll try to show here is how you can get in or out of the car with the help of this lift. We've already got it hooked up in, okay. in the three position. It hooks up basically the same way as, as the lift we tried before. And uh, well, you can try lifting up if you want. Just go all the way up. The first thing we do is get rid of the wheelchair. Okay, stop. So now we're here, we turn around. Get you, get you inside the car like that, to the car seat, and then you go right down again. So that would, that's how it goes. Yeah, fine. And then we unhook like that. And what we do then is we fold it up like that, leave it there, and close the car door. Actually, you can use it on the, on the driver's side too. There's room enough for it, and you can, if you have all the installation for driving the car yourself, you can do it. Where else can it be used other than with the car? Well, you can use it in your home too, in and out of a bathtub, in and out of a bed, off your toilet. All we need there is we need an installation of a post to fasten on, and then the lift itself can be lifted up and moved around. The lift weighs 30 pounds. Okay. So, and it just drops on, it's not fastened except just held by gravity. That's just a sample of lifts that people could see or try out at the exhibition. Next, we'll take a look at some of the technology on display. Many of those attending the People in Motion exhibition were on the lookout for the latest developments in products and technology. This computer has been adapted for people with low vision. John Ogilvie of Frontier Computing demonstrates. 
It's a large print um, system, which makes it so that low vision people can use a standard computer uh, type environment. We happen to have uh, WordPerfect here loaded along with a um, file that we just worked on. Uh, we can use it in real time to do actual editing, such as moving around word by word. For example, say I want to put the word really hope here. I could go in and type, and there we go, the word is added. Also, we have different methods of actually looking around the screen. For example, if I want to just read the whole screen for its content, I could go something like, and I can change the speed, slower, faster, stop, start. This makes it so we just see the line we're working on in large print, but the rest of the document in regular print. There is a menu system as well for setting all the different things. So say, for example, I wanted it a little smaller. There, and I can pick many of the other things. Now we're back to large print again. Earlier in the program, we showed you the Canada Coach Lines bus, one of the largest items on display. The Tickers Corporation had some of the smallest handheld products at their booth, as Tammy Pettis shows us. This is the Dynavox. It works on a symbol system called the DynaSims. You're able to store up to 256,000 characters in it. It works on a category screen, so you're able to store pictures in a, a tree effect. You hit a category such as pronouns to start your sentence. The screen changes to the pronoun screen. Here you can choose the picture I, I to start your sentence off. You want your next action, so you choose want out of the action screen. Then you choose your final symbol, you go under desserts and choose pie. I. When you've finished your sentence, you just choose anywhere in the message screen. I want pie. And it echoes your message. This is a lightweight portable device that can be used for someone that is nonverbal or deaf. When you punch it in, the communicator can see the sentence on this screen, and the listener sees it on this screen. This is a neat device. This allows you to program up to 32 seconds of recorded speech in whatever language you'd like. For example, here's a picture for I am tired. You hit it and it speaks. And yes, yes. No. no, and I don't feel very good. The exhibition also had products designed for people who are blind. Bob Keefe of Guidance Technologies described their tactile flooring to Patty Furman. I've walked on tactile tiles before and they've not always had very much of a, of a surface difference. Mm -hmm. These look really good. Well, there's actually two different designs. The one that we're standing on right now is stop or caution tile. Yeah. And uh, there's one just over to your left just a little. Now that one would be used uh, for a blended street corner, for instance, to uh -huh. uh, determine where the crosswalk is. And also uh, building entrances at a bank teller, um, uh, entrances to buildings, uh, just there's different uh, ideas for these tiles. Since I've come up with them, uh, there's one pending for uh, a building to use the directional tiles to indicate all emergency exits for uh, one particular individual that works there. So oh, there's excellent. quite a few things that I didn't even think of. And this tile here is used again, Tommy? Uh, it's a stop or caution. It would be used. Uh, it's a different texture. It's a detectable warning surface. Yeah. And uh, this one means stop or caution required. We're all becoming more familiar with automatic door openers, some operated by remote control. One such system on display at the exhibition was described by Jim Langdon of Stanley Magic Door. This is the uh, power access automatic door opener, and the thing that's unique about it is the arm does not attach to the door surface. Let me show you. When I push the activation button, this is the handheld transmitter, a roller arm rolls out and it pushes the door open. And then when it's in the open position, a manual door closer will close the door. Consequently, you do not have anything attached to the door, therefore there's less wear and tear. There's less maintenance on the operator itself. There's a variety of controls that can activate this door. These two buttons on the outside here are wireless. That means there is no interconnect wiring between the actual control device and the operator itself. Makes it easier to install, less costly to install. In addition, though, you can have those same devices hardwired. 
That is, you can have wiring if you so choose. Also, this is a one button transmitter. We also have either two buttons. If you have two different operators, you can set them for two different frequencies. Hence, you need two buttons. Versatility, flexibility. If you have three doors, for example, or four doors, you can use a multi button hand transmitter. These particular devices here are called touch controls. You basically just have to lightly touch them and the door will activate. They are good for those people that are physically impaired that cannot, you know, that, that have trouble actually pushing a button per se. All they have to do is lightly touch the control and it will activate the door for them. This is one of the wheelchair designs we looked at on Disability Network last season. With it, the user can stand up and reach high shelves. And it takes up less floor space than a regular wheelchair. The People in Motion show gave people a chance to see it in action or take it on a test run. Exhibitions like this give people the opportunity to try out some ingenious devices to see if they like them or don't like them. And some of the products at the exhibition, such as this device, which turns the pages of a book, were designed to help people with disabilities do things independently with the press of a button. Coming up next on our People in Motion special, taking the opportunity to network. Motion exhibition gave people with disabilities a chance to do some networking. Disabled job seekers could find out about employment prospects at banks, corporations and government departments. They could fill in job applications and speak to potential employers. Really nice resumes today. I'm really impressed with the quality of the candidates and uh, as far as I can see a lot of our recruitment material went and uh, I made some good contacts. What about you? Representatives of consumer organizations were also there to answer questions and give advice. For people who wanted more information about guide dog training or recreational opportunities, such as learning how to sail, instructors were there to fill in details about how and when courses were run. For others whose idea of recreation is unstructured and of the backwoods variety, this wheelchair accessible all-terrain vehicle was a big draw. It's another example of how products can be designed or modified to increase independence and mobility for people with disabilities. The next People in Motion exhibition will be held in June 1992. As we said, it takes place in Toronto. Another show, Reabex, is held in the fall. People in Montreal can catch Reabex in September and it moves to Toronto in October. And if you're in Vancouver next April, Independence 92 will also feature exhibits on technology. For American viewers and those traveling to the States, one of the biggest shows in North America, the National Home Health Care Exposition, takes place in Atlanta in November. There are also many smaller shows held in local communities. And regular trade shows are beginning to display technology that's designed for people with disabilities. For example, many more accessible vans are turning up at automobile shows. If you've been to any of these exhibitions and you have any comments or suggestions, drop us a line. We'll give you our address in a moment. Joe, what caught your eye at this uh, show? Well, because I was able to make a, a comparison with some of the uh, scooter lifts, I bought the best one on the market, so I'm really quite happy about it. How about you? I actually like that lift that I was riding that helps people get around the house. I, f I found that kind of technology fascinating. Neat. And that's our show. I'm Joe Coglin, And I'm Susan Pettit. See you again next week. You can write to us at the Disability Network, CBC, Box 500, Station 8, Toronto, M5W1E6. That's Disability Network, CBC, Box 500, Station A, Toronto, M5W1E6. Or you can fax us at area code 416-975-5636.